house of the Lord one more time, and uh, we are grateful to have all of you that are here in person and those that are watching online. We give God the praise for each and every one of you. And I'm excited to see a friend of mine, Minister George Levitt, in the house today. Amen. And Praise we thank God, God for him and, uh, and everything. I, uh, as I look at Minister Levitt, I think about um, how we connected in the Word. Uh, he was in high school and playing uh, baseball, and I was teaching a Bible study at his home church. And he would come in from sometimes the games, sometimes from practice, and he would be tired. And he would go into sleep on me in the Bible study, but he must have heard something. Amen. <laughs> Some seeds must have been planted. Amen. So we appreciate him being a part of us today and all of you that are here today. And um, I knew some said they were going to be out of town today, but you are here. And we're just grateful for that. Well, I'm not going to worry too much longer, so let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 20, and I've got several verses starting at verse number 1. In Matthew, chapter uh, 20, I'm going to go 1 through about 16. Uh, I pray and trust that you uh, get a word out of this, and I hope that it will change the way you think about certain things after we go through this message. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. I like that translation. And it says in verse 1, For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent, sent them out to work. And now that o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatsoever was right at the end of the day. So they went out to work in the vineyard at noon and again at three o'clock. He uh, did the same thing at five o'clock. That afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why have you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them beginning with the last workers first and when those hired at five were paid each received a full day's wait when uh, those hired first came to their pay they assumed they would receive more but they too were paid a day's wage. when they received their pay they protested to the owner those people work only one hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for that or uh, for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I want to pay this last workers the same as you. As is it again, I mean, against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. I want you to turn to your neighbor if you can and tell your neighbor, favor ain't fair. All right, let's say it again. Favor ain't fair. I, I know this may not be good English, but favor ain't fair. Amen. I want to begin today by sharing a story with y'all. It's a, it's a personal story, but it's going to help me kind of get into um, what we're talking about in this text. 
I think it was around February 1969, I walked in a store that's located at 66 Decatur Street, and it was called Walter's Clothing. I didn't go in there, uh, I was just, I guess, kind of browsing, went in there just looking around to see what was in there and, uh, and what have you. And I had on this sweatshirt that had Mars Brown College on the front of it. And the owner of the store was named Walter Strauss. And Walter asked me, do you want a job? Mm, I thought that was quite interesting. I didn't fill out no application. I didn't ask him, was he hired? I didn't see no sign in the, in the window that said help wanted or anything. And I said, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea to me because it'll help me put gas in my car and I can get some clothes to wear to college and uh, I can be sharp every day I go to school and everything. So I thought it was a great idea, okay? So he hired me, and I went to work there and worked there for several years. About 20 years later, I go back in the store, and this time I take my son, Al Jr., in the store with me. And, um, and so they started asking me, because they, they called me Al, too, and said, is this your son? I said, yes, this is my son. They said, didn't we see him on 2020? And uh, yeah, he was on 2020 when they did the thing about the basketball team here in Rockdale. And he said, well, take him back there and tell Horace the, the hire. Okay? And so Al didn't want to take the job because he felt like that if he did something wrong, he might mess up his dad's reputation. But I said, boy, you could have been getting money. You could have had all the clothes you wanted to go back to college. I don't understand why he didn't take the job, okay? So he didn't take the job. But let me go back to how did, does this fit with our text today? Well, the way it fits with our text is this. There were a group of men who hung out around Walter's clothing every day. Most people call them winos, all right? But they were day laborers, just like we got in the text. And so people would come down every day, and if they need a couple of hands, to uh, work, they would stop with their pickup truck and folk would jump on the trucks and they would take them off to work every day. All they wanted was enough money called just to buy some wine at the end of the day. That's all they needed was enough money. But one thing I learned about them was they were particular about the kind of work that you would offer them. If they jumped on the truck, and George, you told them if you wanted them to move a piano, they would jump off the truck. They were going to stay. They didn't want to do no hard work. They wanted to do something that was going to be easy and they could get a few dollars and come back and buy some wine. Well, one day a guy came down. He had a construction business. And he knew that if he told them he needed somebody to dig some footing with, with some picks and so forth, he knew he would not get anybody to jump on the truck. So he was kind of a creative. He came down, he stopped, and he asked the people, he said, I need six drivers. And so six of the guys jumped on the back of the truck. And so he goes out to the construction site, and when they get out there, they start looking around. They said, where are the trucks that you want us to drive? He said, there's six picks out there. I want you to drive them in the ground. So, so when they didn't want to do everything, you know, anything, they had special things that they wanted to do. So as we look at, 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 at this, uh, this text today, I'm just reminded here uh, of some other things that, you know, that I did. When I was working, I worked on a payroll system. And so when I worked on a payroll system, that meant I had access to everybody who worked at that company. And I used to like to play. I used to try to figure out who's the highest paid male in the company? Who is the highest paid female in the company? I wanted to see who who had, uh, who had was being paid the same amount of money that was in my pay grade, and they might have had some other responsibility. Well, I discovered that there were some people who had a 29 pay grade, which was what I had, and I was a project manager, but they were a director, and I was making more money than they were. But most companies do not want people to know what the other employees make, all right? So uh, in our text today, we see in, the, in, in this, uh, we look at verses uh, one through about three here, we see 
that Jesus is telling his disciples, he said that the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early in the morning and uh, let's suppose it was around 6 a.m. The Bible does not say what time it was in the New Living Translation. But let's just suppose that it was at 6 o'clock in the morning. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. Uh, this was a labor agreement, you know, just like the United Auto Workers are going through right now uh, here in, in, in uh, 2023. And so they agreed. In other words, let's look at it another way. They were kind of like sign a contract. And that contract was, we, I will pay you a normal day's work if you go work for me, all right? So they done signed a contract. And just to make my math uh, a little bit easier for me, uh, let's just say they paid them $10 an hour. And so based on what we see in the text, let's assume that it was 6 o'clock in the morning, and they got off at 6 o'clock in the evening. That meant they would have worked, what, 12 hours. So if you multiply 12 times 10, you get $120. So let's just assume here that what they got paid that particular day was $120. All right? Now, I want to go back and repeat this. They signed the contract. The contract said, I will pay you $10 an hour which is $120, all right? Everybody's on the same page right now. They agreed to the $10 an hour, totaling $120, all right? This was at 6 o'clock in the morning, all right? So he goes back out around 9 o'clock, and there are people standing in the marketplace, standing out there waiting for somebody to hire them. So he tells them, uh, come on and go work in my vineyard. Now notice the difference between the 6 o'clock worker and the 9 o'clock worker. The 6 o'clock workers basically, you know, in the way I'm putting it here, signed a contract. They had an agreement. The 9 o'clock workers did not sign a contract. All Jesus told them in this particular parable was that the landowner said, I will do right by you at the end of the day. All right? That's the only guarantee they had was the fact that he would do right by them. Now, let me ask you today, how many of you would go to work someplace and you didn't know how much you were going to get paid and that, uh, your employer would say, well, I'll do right by you at the end of the day? Most of us, no, I'm not there. I want to know how much you're going to pay me because it may not be worth my while to work on this job, I can go somewhere else and find a job, and maybe I can make $20 an hour, and, and I don't know what you going to pay me, all right? So, he goes out, and he finds them at 9 o'clock in the morning, all right? And so he hires them, and they go to work in the vineyard, and he said, at the end of the day, I will pay you what is right. Now, so we got two sets of workers here. We got the 6 o'clock workers. We got the 9 o'clock workers. All right? It says he goes back out again at noon. All right? And he goes back out again at 3. All right? So we went at 6, went at 9, went at noon, and we went at 3. So now we got four sets of workers. All right? So I don't know why he kept going back out asking people. Uh, to come to work. I don't know whether that first four groups didn't, uh, didn't do the job and they were sorry they weren't getting the job done, what the wrong. But look what he does in verse number six. At five o'clock in the evening, he goes, well, I guess it's afternoon, he goes back into the town again and he saw more people standing around and he asked them a question. Why haven't you been working today? And they replied in verse number seven, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. All right. Now, if we said in the beginning that if the ship was only 12 hours 
The ones that went at five only had to work 60 minutes, one hour, 360 seconds. That's all they had to do, all right? Okay, why didn't the five o'clock people uh, keep staying? You know, when you think about it, why were they staying around there all day? They perhaps had been there all day. They said, nobody asked us to go to work. But it was something evidently about them that they perhaps saw where this landowner keeps coming back asking for folk. Maybe if we just keep staying here, maybe he'll come back again and ask us to work. And maybe somebody in the crowd, in this five o'clock crowd, said, well, you know he ain't coming back at five because we wouldn't have but an hour to work. And the rest of the folk doesn't work. Some of them don't work 12 hours and some of them doesn't work to about nine hours and so forth. No, he probably won't come back. But somebody else may have said, well, you know what? I'm going to hold out. I'm going to believe that he's coming back and uh, he's going to ask us uh, to work. Because maybe there is still enough work for us to do for one hour. Okay? And so maybe we need to see God is not done yet. All right? When we look at verse 18, that evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in. And when those who were hired at 5 o'clock were paid, each received a full day's pay. They got $120. And they only worked one hour. Now, is there anybody in here now that won't work a job for one hour and get paid $120? I don't think most of us think we would take that. $120 an hour? So, they get paid first, all right? They, they receive a full day's pay. And when those who went to work at 6 o'clock saw that they, um, that the 5 o'clock workers got the full pay, they expected to receive a bonus, okay? Because they said, well, you know, if they only work one hour and they got the full pay, surely if we worked... 12 hours, he's going to pay us more than he paid the people that came at 5 o'clock. Okay? So, let me just kind of divide the, uh, the crowd up. Because I'm, I'm looking at the 6 o'clock folk, and I'm not too concerned about the ones in the middle, but the 5 o'clock folk. Alright? You got the 6 o'clock and you got the five o'clock folk, okay? I want to tell y'all today, and I want to be honest, sometimes I think that favor ain't fair. Mm -hmm. All right? Sometimes I feel like I'm just like the six o'clock crowd feel. I want to be in the five o'clock crowd, but sometimes I cannot be in the five o'clock um, crowd because I'm jealous just like the six o'clock people are. All right. I'm gonna give a couple of illustrations here. I ain't gonna call no names, but I'm gonna give some illustrations here so y'all can get see the difference between how the five o'clock folk felt and how the six o'clock folk feel. I know a pastor that's in Texas. He has fifty thousand members. And his church will seat sixteen thousand people. So in order to accommodate those 50,000 people, he got to have about four services a Sunday so that all the 50,000 can come and be a part of the service. Well, this particular guy does not raise his voice. He doesn't holler. He doesn't sweat. He don't do nothing. But he got 50,000 members. And sometimes I say, God, it just ain't fair. Then I know another pastor right up the road here in the cave. In the last few weeks, he's been flying out uh, to hang out with Coach Prime in Colorado. Get back on a plane just in time to come back to Atlanta area and preach Sunday morning. 
And I told the Lord, that ain't fair. Why is it that one got 50,000 members, another one can be flying around on Saturday, and uh, and I got, I got to be riding around on old Lincoln. I, I mean, you know, something ain't right with that, okay? So what we see here in the text, you, if you really be honest, you are like that six o'clock crowd too. Uh, how many of you would be want to be on a job for 20 years and then you get to a certain pay scale and uh, then they hire somebody to start to work there and they get the same amount of money you've been you get and you've been there 20 years. I know most of you would not like it and if you just really be uh, honest about it, you would not like somebody uh, coming in day one, making the same thing you making, you've been in there 20 years on the job. I remember when I first started to work at United Parcel Service, they had a kind of a, a pay scale. I started off with uh, $2.97 an hour. This was back in 1971. And then after a few days, they moved me up to $3.12 an hour. Then after a while, they moved me up to the highest pay, which was $3.22 an hour. I was only working part-time. But now, if you look at that same $3.22 an hour now, uh, now, and compare it to, you know, 1971 to 2023, there is a difference there where that $3.12 is probably, I mean, $3.22 is probably equivalent till about $13 and some an hour, you know, now, all right? But I didn't have a problem with that. I was part-time working, I mean, you know, part-time going, going to a school and so forth, but that wasn't really a problem for me. But I know I would have a problem if I'm working on a job for 20 years and somebody start day one and they get paid the same amount of money that I'm getting paid, all right? Now, what we see, the difference between the 5 o'clock workers and the 6 o'clock workers is there. And I'm putting this in my own word. The 6 o'clock workers were like um, union workers. They had a contract. But everybody else just said, we'll take whatever you pay us. Because we believe that you're going to do the right thing and pay us the right amount of money. But now, when he pays off the 5 o'clock workers, they get the whole $120, as I use it uh, in my example. And so the 6 o'clock workers thought if he gave them $120, I know we're going to probably get $150 or $160. So I know we're going to get more than that. I'll share, share another story with you. Um, I was working at Georgia Tech, and I was trying to get a job at, um, at Martin. And back at that time, that was like in 1979. And, and what they would do back then, in 1979, Martin would post in the Atlanta Journal Constitution the pay that bus drivers received. And I saw bus drivers in the paper at that time making $20,000 a year or more. And I was in information technology, which was a very highly skilled job. Pretty much had to have a, a degree to do this and all that. And so I said to myself, if they pay bus drivers $20,000 a year, what would they pay a programmer like me? So I had in my mind a much higher salary than $20,000, but when I got there and I found out what the issue was, that $20,000 for the bus drivers included a whole lot of overtime. Well, I wasn't going to be working on overtime because they didn't want to pay me no way for overtime because I was salary. But now, what the master says in here, he answered one of them and he said, friend, I haven't been unfair to you. All right, now when you look at that word friend, it was not a term of endearment. He was not being nice to him. He was kind of being, as I heard one pastor say, he was kind of being 
nice, nasty when he called him friend. He said, I haven't been unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? They signed a contract. They agreed to the 120. So it didn't make no difference what everybody else did. They were only going to get the $120 because that's what the contract called for. That's what they had signed up for. They had not signed up for any more. All right? And then he gets mad, the owner of the vineyard. In verse 14, he said, take your money and go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. And then he turns around in verse 15 and asks, is it against the law for me to do what I want to do with my money? Is his money? He can pay you whatever he want to pay. Hmm? So, they were jealous because the ones who went and worked only an hour and they had worked 12 hours, they thought it was unfair and they started grumbling about it because of the fact that they didn't get paid more. Now, perhaps you have worked on a job and you work besides somebody, they always coming in late, they don't stay late, they take long lunches, and uh, they might even get paid more than you get paid. And you say, that ain't fair. And then if you go and complain about it, they say to you, didn't you say you would take this salary we gave you? Because you didn't know what the other people were working. And that's why I believe today that most companies don't want the employees to know what somebody else is making. Because if you find out what somebody else is making and you think they're lazy, you're going to get upset because you feel like you're being cheated. And so he says in verse 16, so those who are last now will be first. And those who are first will be last. All right? Let me just take a little survey here before I close. How many in here, by show of hands, really think that this was unfair? Nobody? Everybody think this was fair? That the group that worked a uh, hour got paid the same thing as the ones that paid uh, that worked twelve hours. How many of y'all think that's unfair? Uh, all right, I'm gonna be honest. I I, I think it was unfair. Uh, I, I, ain't no need to hide it. I, I I just want you to know that I think it's unfair that I worked twelve hours and got the same thing you got for only working one hour. I don't think that's right. Amen. But let me change your perspective on how you see this. This, in a way, can be applied to salvation. Now, what do you mean, Sal? How can this be applied to salvation? Just so because somebody been saved for 50 years does not mean that they got more authority, more rights than somebody who just got saved yesterday. Say it, say it, say it, say it. So I'm so glad today that Jesus does not have this equalized system because there were people who got saved a long time before I did and, and uh, they were no more saved than I was when I became saved. So Jesus recognized that what he said, the last will be first and first will be last. This particular parable should enlighten us. It should encourage us to know no matter when we come into the vineyard, no matter when we get in there, Jesus is going to do right by us. Amen. That's a powerful parable here. If we really understand, it's not about working. It's not about the time that you put in. The fact is, he said, I will do what is right yes. by you. Amen. 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 So that is an awesome thing to know. Just because somebody got saved 20 years ago and I just got saved yesterday, 
uh, that they ain't got no priority over me. But in the world system, that's the way we see things. Yes. But Jesus is telling us, I own the salvation. Yes. And I can do how I want to do with the salvation. Yes. But nevertheless, what we should be excited about is the fact that we are saved no matter when we yes. came into it. Yes. Back in the 1980s, Co-Pastor Gene and I went to a church in uh, Roswell, Georgia called Zion Baptist Church. We went to see some end time movies. And I probably mentioned this before. One was called A Thief in the Night, A Distant Thunder, An Image of the Beast. I know I showed them here too. I done probably showed them at every church that I've been at. I think the first church I ever showed them at was uh, at Rock Temple AME Church. And I thought about it when I watched those movies. It was talking about the rapture. Those movies were made in 1960. But I never got a chance to see them until 20 years later. And I said to myself, what if the Lord had come back and taken the body of Christ up out of the church, I mean out of the world, 60 years ago, I mean 20 years ago, back in the 1960s, I may not have been included in that because I didn't know what they were talking about. So I'm glad that he has delayed his system as to when he will call us out of here. So you too should be happy yes. that the last will be first and the first will be last. Amen. 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 But I want to encourage you to understand sometimes it just, favor just ain't fair. Amen. But don't worry about what somebody else is getting. Don't worry about what God is doing in somebody else's life. You just be grateful for what he's doing in your life. Amen. 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 Amen? Don't measure what you're doing and your success based on what you see is happening to somebody else. Because yes. Jesus can do what he wants to do yes, with his favor. Yes, Amen? Amen. All right, let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Favor ain't fair. Amen. Amen. We pray and trust that you got something, some understanding out of this word today to Amen. know that God is still in the blessing business. He's going to take care of us regardless if we just obey his word. Yes. Favor ain't fair. Amen. And I want to... Take this time to extend an invitation if there's somebody online or somebody even in here that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Today is a good time to do it. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I believe there's a simple prayer that you can pray. Just ask the Lord to forgive you of all of your sin. Yes. And then confess with your mouth yes. that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God has raised him from the dead. I believe today if you pray that prayer and you confess with your mouth that particular phrase, I believe that you too will become saved yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And you don't have to be worried and scared about whether or not if the Lord comes back today or come back the next moment or whatever, that I'm going to be left out. I know where I'm going. Amen? Amen. All right, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 At this time, we would allow those of you that are online, you can give through uh, GiveLify or GiveLify or uh, Zelle, or you can send a check to 3150 Highway 20 South, Conyers, Georgia, 30012. And uh, those of you in person, you can do the same thing, or you can leave your check as you go out uh, of here. But again, I want to thank all of you for being here today. I want to thank all of you that are online that have been watching. Maybe some of you will be not watching at this hour, but you'll watch at another time. But we pray that this message will encourage you to keep going. No matter when you get started, just make sure you get started. Amen? Amen. 
All right, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and every one of you. Um, as I was, um, before I came out this morning, I kind of got a little uh, distracted, and I was I was learning that uh, there were several people I know that have birthdays today, and I, and I want to uh, wish Lori Husson a happy birthday. I think today is her birthday. Amen. And, uh, we thank God for you, and uh, we praise God for all of you that are here. At this time, I'm going to do something kind of unusual. I'm going to let Minister Levitt come and greet us today. Amen. 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 Come on up here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Pastor Sapper. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Church of New Beginnings, God bless you. And God bless. I just thank the Lord for allowing us to be in your presence today. What an awesome word. You know, favor is not fair. Amen. So often when we think about the favor of God and we think about things that are fair, we base fairness on how it relates to us. Mm -hmm. We never base it on how God sees things. And sometimes when God does stuff, you know, we, we, we think it's not fair to us. But when we look at the ultimate scope of the way God moves, it's about his will and his desire being done. Mm -hmm. right. And I am so grateful that over the years he's taught me that, that favor may not be fair, mm -hmm. but the ultimate thing that I took away from this lesson today, Pastor, is that um, those who came in the, 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 the 11th hour, those who came in the 12th hour, uh, not the 12th hour, but at 6 o'clock or, or 12 o'clock in the noon or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, those individuals, they just trusted what? The master of the vineyard said. All right. The right. early trusted. morning folk had to be contracted. All right. All right. The ones who just trusted what the master said All right. got the great, got the same reward as those who were contracted. And my thing is this: there's some folk in this thing for the contract. All right. All right. All right. Now, come on. They look at they look at the scriptures and try to find things and they quote stuff to try to make God move on their behalf. Come on. But be that individual that will just trust what he says. All right. Amen. That in the That's end you'll receive what he desires for yes, you to receive. You see, see, you I, we we come this morning by trusting him. Amen. Amen. We weren't contracted, we weren't forced, we weren't coerced. We just came because we trust God. And whatever you facing in life. Just trust him in the process because he is the rewarder of all good things. Amen. 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 So keep Amen. looking to the hills when it's coming to help. All right. The help, it all comes from help. the Lord. Come all right, God. Appreciate you. All right. Bless you, man. All right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. We didn't come on a contract today. So we we here because Amen. we believe. Amen. Amen. Uh, are there any other announcements that we need to make today? I just want to thank everybody for uh, my struggle and the funeral that the pastor and his wife and all was so kind and great. And his behalf, and I just want to say thank y'all and thank you for everything that I did for him. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Amen. Amen. I went, I went by yesterday to see uh, Deacon Ed Giles, and, uh, and, he, and he's getting around well, but we, we need to keep him in our prayers and, uh, and everything. So uh, pray for uh, Deacon Willie Ed Giles, but like I said, yesterday he was getting around, talking, you know, uh, like nothing is wrong with him or anything, but just keep him in uh your prayers and everything. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to close out with our user uh, scripture, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through uh, 26. It says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come down to the close of our service today, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, that you will comfort us, keep us, O oh God, protect us, and show favor over us, O oh God. Father, we pray that you give us traveling mercies as we travel up and down the highways, O oh God. 
Father, we thank you for those who have assembled here today. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for those who had a desire to be here but couldn't be here. And then, Father, we thank you for those who are watching us online. We ask that you will continue to be a blessing to them as well as to us, O God. We thank you right now, Lord, for what all that you're doing. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great week. Amen. amen.